Um, yeah, Kenny. Favorite three letters. Come on, Phil. You know it. O G B. O G B, baby. O G B. O G B. And Phil, let's help people out. What does O G B stand for? It stands for old growth beverages. It is a it gives me a tingle. What, the heck? <laughs> what, what is old growth beverages, Phil? <laughs> Why I'm so glad you asked, Kenny. It's That's a micro for. ground tea. So it's a it's a tea where we take all the tea leaves, we grind them up into fine, fine powder. And it basically takes your process from getting from thirsty, unfulfilled, and uh, wanting a hot, refreshing tea. Uh, and it takes that process and it, it, it converts you into a happy tea drinker in about 30 seconds. All you need is hot water, a spoonful of microground tea of your choice from OGB. And then if you want to top it up with something, um, and then all you got to do is sit back cool it down a little and enjoy because in my experience when we get together and we're having fun I yeah. always miss the moments right because we're like talking and then I'm like damn it what did you say just there because that was really great totally <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah oh man how are you good thank you yeah what's yeah. what's new with what's you going on Hmm. I guess this is... <laughs> that's a loaded <laughs> question. <Whoa. laughs> kind of feels like the drummer response. Uh oh. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah, Tell I us what's going on. Top of mind is like I think it's about maybe top of mind for a lot of people. It's just like scaling a business in like a changing economic environment like there's so many changes across the board in terms of like cost structure for people whether it's like their supply chain or like digital ad spend and acquisition costs like the world is is changing quickly and the way we do yeah. business must uh reflect that um and i think the speed's pretty rapid right so technology is helping us be better producers, better marketers have more impact, but it also creates more complexity in terms of like just how things are being done and the demand and supply and how that impacts the cost of doing business. So that's kind of top of mind for me right now, just generally speaking as a senior leader, marketing natural products. And that's top of mind for a lot of uh, natural brands too, is just yeah. how do we navigate this change? Like yeah. where do yeah. I focus my money? Like, what about my staff? Like, and it's the sky's not falling, but we are having to make tough decisions and and rethink how we do things. So it's an opportunity and a challenge depending on your mindset, right? Well, yeah. we've, been, we've been talking yeah. about this for yeah. months and months and months right? and months. We yeah. were talking about this yeah. mid last year about yeah. next year's going to be interesting. Next year's and people, you know, again, you 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 build your you build your world on the time you're in, which is good. Yes, Kenny. But you should also build your world on the time to come. Yeah, I love right? that. I love that. Um, you know, sometimes people, I think I, I do, I'm a mindfulness practitioner in the sense that I've warmly studied mindfulness. I facilitate um, mindfulness teaching and training with people. And I've been formally been practicing it for, for several years. And part of mindfulness is, um, you know, allowing ourselves to be in the present mm -hmm. moment um and accepting things as they are mm -hmm. like yeah. without judgment right mm -hmm. and i think sometimes uh business people we might have these structures of like certain kpis and pressures and things that we think or want have to happen a certain way but um by resisting reality and not actually letting go and allowing ourselves to become aware of what's coming to your point Penny yep. to deal with the current reality and also to be you know proactive and willing to take risk or change like you just end up getting stuck so I think it's just it's really interesting how the mindset I think plays a role in how we run our companies too well, I think it plays a, a total role in it like again Phil and yeah. I've been talking about this for a long time is that <clears throat> nothing is happening now hasn't been talked about probably pretty much the last year <laughs> yeah fair yeah like we've been we've been in a supply chain issue for three. 
we know yeah. it's another couple of years. We <laughs> talked about that. Yeah. Right. We knew yeah. inflation was coming because the, you know, it was already happening. We knew the economy was going to slow down because they had the slow inflation. But none yeah. of this is like, holy shit, did you see that? Yeah, we've been talking about it a lot. <laughs> now, whether you reacted yeah. or not or yeah. moved is different. Yeah. And you don't yeah. have to. I mean, yeah. you know what? Really, if you were, if you didn't do anything and you wanted to live in the world that you lived in, then you just have to accept that maybe right now you may have to adjust uh, human resources. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how to say that pleasantly. Yeah. Uh, you may have to look at a world of maybe, you know, this was the year we thought we'd make money. Well, maybe not. Mm -hmm. And you can still ride out the storm. I mean, it's not, it doesn't have to be the end of the world. Mm -hmm. there, there are things that, but the, like, to be fair though, right? Like, cause they're, you're, you're not wrong in all the things that you've said. I do think though, that right now there's probably a bunch of entrepreneurs kind of beating themselves up, right? Because they're like, well, I tried. Right. Um, but, but I, I do think there, there's some things <clears throat> like, if you look at, you know, Jessica, you were talking about like digital spend, for example, yeah, and returns yeah. right now. And they are, they're, I was going to say kind of not great, but they're, they, they suck, right? Like right now we're seeing less engagement. We're seeing less clicks. We're seeing more, at least I am, right? Mm -hmm. I'm seeing that clicks are more expensive. You're, you know, however you measure Rojas, click through rates, you know, cost per click, whatever, it all seems to be rising quite a bit, right? So like everything, you know, digital spend <laughs> yeah. is, well, you know, digital spend, we didn't think would inflate like with cost of goods and yet it has right um not it's not inflation it's literally people are less engaged i think and also all these privacy laws that are coming the cookies yeah. you know going away all that stuff starting to impact the way we do business but it's just an extra pressure now on right. all the things that we're looking at right like it's it's um but those is. weren't unknowns either, right? We talked about we they were less anticipated. Less they were anticipated, less anticipated, yeah, right? for sure. But yeah. as business people, like all of us, yeah. is you 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 know you can the, listen. He's you tough can today, huh? Because, like, because oh. it drives me crazy because because I because like I, I live this too, right? Is <laughs> yeah, you can I paint the world, you can paint the world with rose colored yeah. glasses all yeah. day and be the optimist of optimists, and I, I, God bless you. That is yeah. wonderful. But just so you know. Not everybody finishes first and there are yeah. no ribbons for 10th. So really at the end of the day, you still have to be in the world you're in and you have to be able to anticipate. Again, if like yeah. and I've got businesses, Phil, like some of them, yeah, I haven't anticipated some of the things that are happening. Hopefully I've padded enough or saw some other things where we can ride out some of the shit. That's part of life and that's part of business. I mean, it happens. So yeah, I think- I think I'm with you. I, I think what is going through my head is like for entrepreneurs that, you know, are used to grinding things out. Mm -hmm. What we're yeah. talking about right now makes them grind harder, harder. Right? I know, but, 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 but I don't know, like to your point, Jessica, about mindfulness is this may not be one that you need to grind at. What you probably need to do is stop breathe and breathe, breathe right and then do a little refocusing maybe ask and, a few people yeah, yeah and envision where you are right you know kind of yeah. a year from now yeah. right before you go and yeah i'm going to go out and start chopping things because you could you could cause yeah. more grief to yourself yeah. and again yeah. the digital spends i mean what's the first place people go they'll cut marketing and they'll sure. lay off people and you're thinking yes those are immediate and you will see a definitive change on the bottom quickly, mm -hmm. not necessarily positive, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? There's repercussions mm -hmm. to doing shit like that. And mm -hmm. sometimes just that breath of air and say, well, okay, is there another way out of this yeah. or what? Yeah. Okay. I'm in the yeah. shit now. I see it. Fine. I'm here. That's reality. Now, what does it look like in six months? If I don't do anything, if I do this, this, and this, this, that, and that, whatever. So I agree with you, Phil. I mean, it, but again, it's, yeah. it's, it's, these are discussions that entrepreneurs just, yeah. have to have more frequently. I was taking cues from yes. Jessica because she she's is right. like energetic, right. but then there are moments where she's super calm yeah. kind of like, and Breathe. so like, because we're talking about it and like, you know, with, like what we're talking about, plus all the crazy other things yeah. that are happening in the world makes you kind of like want to burrow in and just keep digging right like yeah just totally. keep swimming just keep digging but but it is kind of like to your point is you got to stop and zero in a little yeah. right like think about where you want to be in a year 
Um, Cause the opportunities are there. Trying to keep There's myself from panicking too. <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. like it's natural. Like mo most of our entrepreneurs or people that are yeah. successful, um, we're fighters. Like we're there to fight yeah. and make it work. Right. And a lot yeah. of us have come up through sheer willpower, force and hard work. Right. And there's a time and a place for that, but there's also a time where, um, and it's a both that, not an either or actually, where if your reaction to the challenges and pressure is to go into that like fight or flight mode and mm -hmm. your nervous system is constantly, you know, in that space That's and hard. you're pushing out your adrenals, like the decisions you're going to make are just not going to be as good. Yeah. It's very simple. It's actually physiological. So learning to, you know, step back, whether you're working with like a coach to support you to do that, but to work, you know, as they say on the business, just right. not, not just in it. Mm -hmm. And then to be able to have the courage to step back and go, as you said, I think Phil, um, wait a second here. Okay. So these are some of the current challenges or constraints. Now, what can I do to, to, to like, how, how can I focus my energy and my resources right now to maximize where I can and to see where I might be a year from now and just be willing to let go of some stuff, but not in a panic base, like, oh my God, the sky is falling. I'm going to shop everything. No, you need to be able to slow down. It's Ken mm -hmm. said, and Great. take a look at my opportunities, like which accounts if I'm in retail um, do I think I can keep growing? What do I need to grow there? Yeah. Are there certain other areas or markets that are just slower in general where I might as well rationalize or let go or maybe my skew? Just it's a good time really to do that, that too. Well. Like yeah. just let go of it. It's, okay. it's a great mm -hmm. time to, it's a great time to no. call things that you might've been yeah. trying to hang on to that maybe now it's, you know, what's not the worst thing. Mm -hmm. It's good. Yeah. 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 I mean, we had well, a podcast that hasn't published yet. Sorry, Phil, that yeah. okay. this, this other person basically said, you know what? as much as I want this to be, it's just not going to work. Mm -hmm. So their choice was to walk from it. Now, I don't want that for everybody either because I don't like people's dreams being squished. But there totally. are times when that's a decision. And then there's other times, you know what? Fuck it, I'm doubling down. Totally. And here's why, because I can see this, 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 and this. And if I do this now, it's going to sting for the next four or five months. But there's a massive light at the end of this. Perfect, totally. double down. And change how you do things. I remember years ago, I was sent down. It was a, such a great assignment. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. I was sent down to Honolulu in Hawaii to take a look at a subsidiary company of a company that my parent company owned to assess uh, the performance of the company. And this was in 2008. Wow, wow it's a tough time. Right wow. away. And this is a tourism product that we were selling right it's away. Uh, bankruptcy was up 67%. Visitors were, were down significantly. Um, and the company was like selling advertising in a tourism sector, right? And then nobody had any money. And the team that had been there, they'd actually unfortunately cut 20 staff already. And the current team was in this mindset of like, people just don't have money. They're just not going to buy this. And they wouldn't need, they didn't even, they were so disgruntled that anyone would pick up the phone to test stuff. They're just like, nope, I've heard no too much. This isn't going to work. Yeah. And I, as a new person to this market, I did come in with humility and do a lot of listening first. It's important to do that in any new, new culture. Mm -hmm. And then I took a look at it and I said, you know what? We got to repackage how we sell this. Mm -hmm. We are, we, we need to reposition how we sell this stuff, sell it differently. And guess what? We triple our sales in the worst economic decline in the history of yeah. that region, because luckily I was there and I'm not saying I'm so great, but the, the process that was used, yeah, you saw something different. Back, yeah. look at it differently, repackage how we did stuff and we had tremendous results. So Sometimes it's just a simple restructuring or a simple mm -hmm. but you have way to have of doing something do different. Yeah. Outside yeah. always helps. And I think that's why we, yeah. Phil and I, some, I think someone asked, maybe he's asked me on a podcast or asked us together, what, which one thing yeah. you'd recommend. You know what? Ask people, find people that you can talk to. Bringing you in, you weren't in that industry per se. Like it's totally. not your complete thing. So yeah. you come in and look at it and think, well, no, yeah, you're right. For example, I've got two food distributors. One yeah. does commodity, one does high end. Well, in a tough time, who dies? And my answer was neither. I love that. Case. Or both. You know what that happens? Maseratis don't stop. Maserati doesn't stop making cars because the economic turned out. There's people who still have money. Maybe you don't totally. sell as many. You're not going to sell them to me, but you want to sell them to me before anyway. So <laughs> what's the difference? 
And I told people that. I said, well, our prices are higher. I said, but we cater to a different group of people. And there are other people, even when times get tough, may not want to give up that special olive oil or whatever it is. And they're willing to give up the extra hamburger at another joint or what. I don't care. But there's opportunity in every downturn. Right. Just as just as the flip side is the other way in upturns, there's a lot of people that go out of business because even in an upturn, they could whatever. Right. I mean, yeah, you can get passive, right? Well, sure. Oh, yeah, things are good. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just sit back and kind of whatever. And then before you know it, uh oh, what happened there? Like, we just have to keep staying focused and and I think continue to to be strategic and to look at what's going on and avoid the trap of getting caught in the day-to-day and caught in like trying to focus or um not paying attention to the bigger picture i guess and just try not try to sell yourself i talk to other people like i i I do that with him like i bring him in because sometimes it's my world is i'm in my world and i can't see i can't see the forest through the trees because i'm I'm so buried into it i'll throw things at him and he'll look at thinking oh okay well i didn't really see that one i mean are you sure and he's like yeah, it's right in front. You're and you're looking at well, pretty yeah, pretty much right in front. Didn't quite yeah. see that puppy. Yeah, that's fine. Got that one now. Where you know because what do you you go right to panic? You go right to excitement. You're thinking you're already not seeing things. That makes it no better when you hit those buttons. Yeah. Right. Can can I work in a plug? Yeah. Do I, I want to work in a plug for Jess actually. Why? Why? Because Why Jess. That? Because Jess okay. did this webinar. Um, that talks about consumers and how they react to inflation, which I thought, like you sent over some of the slides you were covering, and they're oh, yeah. fascinating, and insightful. Like so, like on the note of asking people, like what she talked about is things you need to know, right? Like so, exactly. if you're gonna stop and take a break, you you want to know what other people are doing, but you also want to know what people are doing, like. Yeah. Consumers, right? Like right. people who buy your product or should be buying your product. Um, and you did this really great. Like, is it is it a webinar you've done? Will you do it again? Or um... people can go and watch it right now for okay. free on our website cool. on okay. business.socialnature.com. So okay. I can okay. send you like the exact page. Yeah. Uh, and then I'll throw the later. link in the absolutely in this yeah. fast and they can well. watch it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah. We got we we covered a bunch of things like in terms of like how are people responding to inflation and what was exciting about it was that people in general are way more health conscious than they were even 18 months ago. So in a way, I think the whole COVID thing kind of sparked a greater consciousness in, in health management and health uh, prevention strategies, right? Um, and that has continued to stay. So people are continuing to spend money like on natural products. And the webinar talks a little bit about um, where are the categories where people are still um, seeking or sorry, not still, they want natural and organic no matter what, but certain categories, people are more likely to drop the natural organic composition in favor of a cheap alternative. So like right. they're more of a lot likely to use a non-natural house cleaner right now than they are to drop their natural pet food, for example, right. or their natural baby food or right. whatever. And the other thing that we saw is that across the board, regardless of your generation, and we looked at um, Gen Z, millennials, Gen X, baby mm-hmm. boomers, that everybody is um, cutting their, they're feeling the pressure of groceries and they are looking for, you know, lower price items. They're cooking at home more. So if you're yep. in the condiment business or you've got, food products that you can show like more in use, like how can I make more meals with the sauce, for example, and get people to see that. So they're not having waste. Like you're going to sell more of the sauce or whatever, taking advantage of the cooking at home, those kind of things. And then people are going a little bit more to conventional is what they said, because generally speaking, the conventional channels have more economies of scale and can offer a lower price. So the natural channel, um, it looked like regardless of your generation, people were not going to the natural channel stores as much right now because they're more price sensitive. So right. that was just another key insight. So if you're only in natural channel, then you might be dealing with less store traffic and you might need to spend more money in that channel if you're only in that channel to convert what's in there or partner with that retailer on something you can do. Right. Yeah. Really smart. It's smart. She's a smart lady you should yeah, leave on your it's list. smart. And that was free. 
You yeah. know what I'm saying? In a tough time, a tough well, time. Well, no, it was free for me. Apart, she's but... sending you, because you got on after us, so Jessica and I already agreed that she's sending you the bill. Yeah. I oh, got this for oh. so it was good. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll just, um, I'll send you his details. You can bill him after. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm not um, even listening to this conversation that part of it. I've tuned that out. <laughs> oh, the other thing I want to say also is like, I know plant based has been a little controversial the last while in the news. And what we saw is that people, regardless of their dietary preference, are buying more plant based substitutes across the board. Right. And there's like growth in areas like plant based milks keep growing, plant based chicken was a uh, kind of a higher growth one compared to 18 months ago, plant based ice creams plant-based cheeses and yogurt so there's lots of opportunity in that space and based on what consumers are saying they're they're still spending money on those why because they believe they're healthier that's why that's right. the main driver is health right 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 if you look at it jess i mean a lot of the beat up is because a lot of the product was yeah. i mean so is plant-based i'm glad you had that hill to die on but the hill to the you know the path there wasn't the you know wasn't any better than conventional side Fair, fair, and right. Yeah. So really, you know, put yeah. out a good product, and you should do fine. Keep it 100%. clean, because there is a lot Keep of good stuff out there. I, th I think that's, I think that's the trick. Like even your point about the natural yeah, side, yeah. natural retailers have control over a lot of the world. You know, again, this yeah. may be the time. I got into a discussion with someone the other day. I was, in, I was filling the pop cooler, yeah, or something in the back, and these people are talking, and they said something about, well, you're way less expensive than uh the majors because we are like our produce is cheaper than superstore or save on or safeway like we just are yes because that's the very nature of, the, of these businesses and i said yeah but we also choose to be there i said you know i and it's mm. well they make lots of money i said i appreciate that i said you know and i'm one that they'll knock them all the time but they have different overhead they yeah have a lot fair. more employees than i have they have a whole different world to cover and i said if they're not profitable then nobody's shopping there because they're not going to be around so you got to balance out all these worlds. I said, but yeah, your job I mean, as a consumer though, I said, if you really want to do the thing, support the locals. We're in yeah. the community. Our money goes back into the community. We try to support these areas. I said, that's the part I'd rather you argue than worrying about, like, I don't like Loblaws making a shit ton of money right now when I know what else is happening out there and how they're making it. That's a different story. Listen, the fact yeah. they're making you can't open that door. That's a we whole different, not fast thought. <laughs> but it's a great... <laughs> My point was this, though, is that it doesn't yes. matter. Them making money, they have to. Otherwise, yeah. we have nowhere to go. I, got, yeah. I want to shop, too. We're yeah. okay with that. But yeah. I got in this discussion. We were talking about it. And I said, listen, you got to yeah. Yeah. look around, see what's going on. I said, we might run on a leader margin. If I get a deal, I pass a deal, which natural yeah. guys have never been good at. If you buy 20% you know right. off, give it off. Like, why are you, you pocket it if you can, mm -hmm. but don't mm -hmm. piss and moan then that nobody's coming to me. Well, it's because mm -hmm. I got the 20 and I took, gave the 20 back to the consumer. I still it's made my true. money. I made it's my true. margin. They got a deal. I got a deal. You know, that's like the independent grocery stores like you, Kenny, like that actually is another channel that we saw in our data that people are going to more right now. And yes, from a marketing perspective, it's harder because the channel is more fragmented and stuff, but we cannot undervalue the role that our independent grocery store plays in our local communities, offering more affordable groceries, better shopping experience. Like in theory, it's for real. It, it's not, I, it's I, agree, true. I agree with you. And people are going there. And so I do think that brands <clears throat> where they can, could support like their regional reps to get out there on the street, meet with these stores, especially stores like yours. And this is a plug because I'm from the drive. I know the hood. It's yeah. not like I'm trying whatever, but I've seen this with real passion. But we're from get the hood there, because we appreciate them. it, right? Let's work together, you know? Yeah. 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 It's huge. Okay. It's huge. This is our fast thought. That wasn't that fast. <laughs> wasn't that There's fast? Okay. Podcast. We should have done a what's podcast. What's the recap, yeah. Ken, that, What's the big idea? The big idea <laughs> here is what? Number one. Number one, you're going to call Jessica. Versus, pro sure. You're going to call me <laughs> anytime you want to talk how to scale a company or mindfulness. Please reach out to me, Jessica 100%. at socialnature.com. Mm -hmm. And what's our big uh, big recap here? Do you want to recap any big things? I think, I think the big recap is um as you feel the pressures of things happening one yeah. stop take a deep breath have a look around if you are having some trouble focusing or deciphering what's happening around you there are lots of resources the three of us are good Call examples us. 
um, the work that Jessica is doing at Social Nature. A gr another great example of places that you can get data right. and intelligence that helps you kind of figure out what's next. Two is learn to let go, right? So look at the situation in front of you, try and figure out what you can do that helps you um, get to where you want to be in say 12 or 18 months from now. And then there are some things that maybe you really want to do, but they shouldn't be something you should be doing. You should learn to let go of those. Mm, right. Yeah. I think those are two big ones. And yeah. then I think the last one is follow the data, right? The insights that are out there um, tell you what consumers are after, um, what consumers are thinking about, what they're worried about, what they're struggling with. You follow that. It helps you reformat right. the things that you're doing. How's that for takeaways? Very well done. Spot on. Excellent. Excellent. Spot on. So, um, Jess, thank you, thank you, thank Thanks you. Thanks as always. And then, will we see you at um, CHP next oh, week? Yeah. Uh, yes, you will. So excited. All three of us are going to be there. If you're watching this and you're going to be there, come find us. We'll be all come over the place. Us. For sure. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks, thank everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.